एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम now in this topic we will study about the ideal and practical transformer so what are the ideal transformer without any loss and a practical transformer which have some losses i am narendra kaur now if you want to study this topic in detail kindly refer this book by s chand publishing e book link description is given in the description box we will begin with this uh two kind of transformer so first one is a ideal transformer so what are the ideal transformer and second one will be the practical transformer so first one is a ideal transformer so in starting what are the kind of uh, in the transformer basically input power is used is that is a electrical so electrical input power is used and in output we are again get the electrical power so output is also electrical so these are the basic features of the transformer so in the basic feature of transformer input is electrical second the output is also electrical third one the output is static output or you can say also input they both are static what is the meaning of static over here static means the input and the output they are static means in case of transformer no part is moving means all the parts of the transformer they are in the rest condition no part is moving they no part is in the moving condition so output and input both are static third one so the fourth one that is the efficiency that is quite large so efficiency in case of transformer as no part is moving no loss will be there means loss is minimum in this in case of transformer so efficiency is very large that is around 90 to 95% means if we are giving the 100% of input the 90 to 95% output will be there so efficiency that is very large and uh, if efficiency is very large so automatically uh loss will be very small the loss is very small so these are the basic features of transformer now the transformers are of two kind one is ideal and second one is a practical transformer now firstly what is a ideal transformer now ideal transformer is what so in ideal transformer number 1 input is equals to output means input voltage or input power that is equals to the output power there is no loss second there is no loss third frequency of input that is if we can say that n1 frequency that must be equals to output or in the secondary part that frequency equals to n2 you can denote the frequency word with now you can denote this frequency word with either with f1 or f2 or with n1 or n2 means input and output both are equal there is no loss second the frequency of output primary part and secondary part that is same so these are the cases of the ideal transformer now in case of transformer if we draw the basic picture or basic diagram of transformer so this is like that now this is called the primary part and second one this is called the secondary part now this is what here this is a core we can represent core like this so this is a basic diagram of transformer this is a primary part having the frequency that is n1 and this is a secondary part having the frequency n2 now in the primary part you can see that here the number of turns 
in this primary part is more while in secondary part number of turns are very small now why this is so that i will explain in the next part now in this part you can see that here n1 is a number of turns in the first uh, uh, primary core and number of turns in the secondary core now how the current flows in the transformer now this core that can be represented like this this is made up of iron or this is called core of the transformer now if there is a primary winding this is the input now here is the secondary winding here in order to get the output we supplied over here load okay now this is the primary part and that is the secondary part secondary part of the transformer this is the primary part of the transformer number of turns in this case is n1 here the number of turns are n2 core is made up by iron now the current flows in this case here the current flowing is i1 here we are getting the current that is i2 here the input voltage is v1 output voltage is v2 or we can say that we are getting the emf or output over here v2 now the emf of this transformer that is always more than the output value because there are some losses in the transformer so due to some losses in the transformer emf is always more than output emf what is emf over here that is a induced value of the induced or the induction emf electromotive force induced force due to current that is always more than the output value because some of the emf or you can say the output that is lost due to losses there are a large number of losses are present in the transformer so these this is these are the basic feature of the transformer now in case of ideal transformer ideal transformer the input power that is primary power is this one that must be equals to power at the secondary winding so this is denoted by the word n1 v1 into i1 that is the input power what is n1 over here this is a number of turns that must be equals to n2 v2 into i2 so that means in case of ideal transformer output at input that must be equals to output there is no loss second one the number of windings that means n1 that is equals to n2 what is n1 n2 over here these are the number of turns in the primary winding and in the secondary winding so number of turns must be same third one the frequency f1 that must be equals to f2 here the frequency at input part that can be tuned this out input frequency that must be equals to the f2 so this is the features of the ideal transformer now next is the how the current flow in the transformer this is the important part so in order to understand how the current flow in the transformer firstly we understand the flow of current in the primary winding so this is i1 over here so according to fleming's right hand rule when the current if according to fleming's right hand rule the value of thumb that will represent show as a direction of current now if this is a direction of current then emf force that will be induced like this according to curl of our fingers so in this case in a primary winding if the current is along this direction then emf that will be along this value will be this one now again here in this case in the winding the current will flow along this value here the current will flow like this so in this case if it flows like this then that will be the direction of current so uh, here this is a direction of current 
Now, if the current is straight line, induced EMF will be along the curl of finger. Second, if the current is along the curl of finger, then induced EMF will be represented by the straight line. So, that means here, this is the direction of induced EMF in case of transformer. That means EMF is also induced in the core. When we supply the current, Due to Fleming's right hand rule, this is a Fleming's right hand rule. If this is a direction of current, then EMF is induced in this wire in the primary winding that is represented by the curl of the finger. Now, in this case, now here the current flows along the curl of the finger. Now, if this is along the curl of the finger, so that will give us a direction of EMF. So, this is according to Fleming's right hand rule, means EMF is induced in the core. Due to this induced EMF in the core, Again, in the secondary winding, what we will get? So, due to EMF induced in this case. Now, EMF is again induced in this core. If EMF is induced in this core along this direction, then again current start flowing. So, current start flowing in the secondary winding. So, due to current in the primary winding, EMF is induced. Again, due to induced EMF, we will get current flowing in the secondary winding. So, again, now according to Fleming's right hand rule, if EMF is along this direction, again the current will induce like this. If current is induced like this, so we will get here I2 current. So, this is a basic principle of transformer. How we will get in from e input, how we will get the output. So, input is here. Here we are giving input that is in the form of firstly EMF. So, this is the input which is given in the form of EMF. Again from the input what we will get? We will get the current I1 and according to Fleming's right hand rule due to this I1 current we will get EMF induced in this core. When the EMF is induced in this core due to induced EMF we will get current in the secondary winding. So, due to this current in the secondary winding, we will get output at the load. So, this is a basic principle of or you can say that this is the working of a transformer. Now, in case of ideal transformer, the value of input that must be equal to output. But in general case, this is not so. There are some losses in the transformer. So, practically transform uh, in the ideal transformer, this input value in the last uh, chapter, we have studied the output and input at the for the AC. So, input power that can be given by V1 I1 cos theta 1. What is here V1 I1? V1 is a input voltage. Due to this input voltage, I1 current is induced. What is theta 1? Theta 1 is a current between voltage and current. So, this is the input power. That is the input power at the primary winding. Second one is a output power that is a V2 I2 into cos theta 2. Now what is V2 here? What is I2? I2 is the current which is flowing in the secondary winding due to induced EMF in the core due to uh, application of current in the primary core. So, I2 is the flow of current in the secondary core due to flow of current in the primary core. V2, what is V2? Due to this uh, de uh, development of current in the secondary core, at the load we will get output voltage that is V2 over here. So, V2 I2. Now, what is theta 2? Theta 2 is the angle between V2 and I2. So, this is called the output voltage. So, this is the output voltage. Now, in case of ideal transformer, this output voltage must be equals to input voltage. So, for ideal transformer, input voltage or input power that must be equals to output power that is given by I1 v1 cos theta 1 equals to i2 v2 cos theta 2. Next, 
frequency that is n1 or you can say that f1 that must be equal to n2 into f2 and the number of windings that is n1 that must be equal to n2. What is n1? That is the number of windings at the primary and n2 is the number of winding in the secondary coil that is used in the output form. So, in the first part we have studied about the what is the basic working principle of transformer and second what is the ideal transformer. So, in the next part part 2 we will study about the what is the practical transformer, why in the transformer there is losses and why we will get a smaller output value rather than the input value in case of practical transformer. Now, if you want to study this topic in detail kindly refer this book by the S. Chant Publishing ebook link description is given in the description box. If you like this video please kindly like, subscribe and share this video and also press the bell icon for the future notifications. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.